Hey everybody, it is Casey here, and I tell you, I have been wanting to pick YouTube back up for a while, and it has just been, um, oh, hard to find the time, because it, it does, it takes up so much time, and so... I have just decided that I will give multitasking um, a chance to see, you know, if this will work for me. If you find this super distracting, let me know. If you find it engaging, you know, if it's something you kind of like the multitasking, let me know that too. I'll tell you, I'm going to talk about Etsy today. I was a... Um, uh, I started my first Etsy shop, Mountain Cove Market, in 2020, right uh, right after the pandemic hit. And, you know, for the first year, I don't know, I did about, not the first year, but like, I started around June, 1st of June of 2020, and I did about $1,000 a month for, um, on average, is what it averaged up to when it came down like for 2020 and for those final six months of 2020 that's what i did if you're wanting to know what i'm doing now i'm just making a, a salad for dinner that's what i'm doing and so i'm multitasking but anyway it etsy took off for me i live in the missouri ozarks in forsyth missouri i live out in the country in the Ozark Mountains, we're real close to Branson. Now, I paint French furniture, and, or usually, like, uh, that's mostly what I do, or just big, uh, ornate French pieces, and, you know, it's not, it's not really too much in line with the style that a lot of people in this very rural area enjoy. Um, or they might look at it and say it's nice, but they don't have homes big enough and it's it's not the style of their home, like the type of furniture that I do and, and I get that. So anyway, just uh, my pieces in general just weren't selling super well. Um, I was really struggling in flipping furniture to get it to take off and for example like one armoire that I had one of the I think the first one that I did I paid $80 for it and um how I spent probably like six to nine hours refinishing it that might not sound like a lot of time to some of you but I just stayed up one night and was able, working on it in my garage, kind of got in the zone and, um, you know, it just it came by kind of quickly. But anyway, so all said and done, I think I had about nine hours in it, maybe six to nine hours, paid $80 for it, had all my supplies in it, and I couldn't sell it for $350. So... I eventually I opened up a, an Etsy shop and I put my peelings in the wrong bowl. I opened up an Etsy shop and it, I, you know, it, it kind of took off. It was about three weeks before I had my first sale. I just decided, of course, you know, when you want to open up, get a nationwide audience, you want to open up an Etsy shop, shipping. Shipping is always the like the scary thing shipping is the thing where you feel like you're gonna have the most trouble and so I just taught myself how to do shipping my husband and I did and I just looked up everything I possibly could and you know we figured it out I do have videos on shipping and um and I will make more but go check those out if you are wanting to learn more about shipping so I figured it all out so my Etsy shop in um, opened in June 2020. Then it went to 21, 22, 23. So really three full years on Etsy, or, or just barely shy of, like a month and a half shy of three full years. 
And so, um, oh, my, the year before last, I did about, okay, so my first full year, I did about $40,000. My second year, I did about $65,000-ish on Etsy. And my last year, I did really close to $100,000. And so just in furniture sales on Etsy. And so in sales revenue. So that's not profit. Um, but then I also had local sales and sales on marketplace and stuff. So it had gotten to a point where it was really profitable. And I was probably averaging through people buying stuff in my brick and mortar antique shop, furniture shop, um, buying stuff online on Etsy, people buying stuff on my website. You know, we'd probably in our last year, we made like a hundred and not made, but in revenue, about $120,000 in furniture sales. So anyway, and my Etsy sales revenue was averaging between, like I had some months that was, I had like $22,000 in sales. And then I had other months, I think I averaged um, about eight to $11,000 a month in sales. And so, and you know, it would just kind of depend like on how busy I got. And honestly, that was me working not working 40 hours a week because I have a lot of other stuff going on. Um, and so had I been doing that, you know, working completely 40 hours a week, refinishing furniture and uploading my stuff, I 100% believe that I would have had a lot more sales. But anyway, so Etsy was doing really well for me. And here's what happened. So in... April, mid-April, so right now is mid-July. In mid-April, I went away for this Christian women's, um, it's not a retreat, uh, but a, a Christian women's weekend where there's lots of worship and testimonies and that type of thing. And so before I left, I am one to research and learn and learn and learn and learn and learn some more. I am I just never stopped trying to learn. And so before I left, um, I was doing market and product research. Like, I don't get to the point, I don't think ever, where I feel like I have arrived. I always just try to keep learning. And I've been doing some product research. And in my product research, I just saw, um, was really coming across the benefit of simplifying titles. And so I went into my Etsy shop and I simplified a bunch of my titles, probably like 15 of them or so, 15 or 20, maybe even. Anyway, I went away for my weekend and I was gone like four days or so. Get back. And when I get back, I go to check my Etsy on my Etsy app, and there was a, I couldn't log into my shop, there was a notification there that said that my shop had been closed down due to suspicious activity. I hadn't violated any of the Etsy, um, you know, any of their rules, and so if you want to know what those are, they're very easy to find. Etsy has them on their website, on their seller's you know, pages and stuff, um, seller's handbook, so I'm trying to say, hadn't violated anything, you know, nothing, I'd been doing this for three years, it was very, it been, had taught many people how, you know, how to, to do Etsy and sell furniture, and, um, and it was just gone, <laughs> I couldn't log into my shop at all, well, here's the concerning thing, is I had, all of it's concerning, but I had several open orders, still do, of customers, of furniture that customers had paid for that I needed to ship. Now, on all but one of them, let me grab some parsley here, all but one of them, um, I had their phone numbers and had been in contact with them. But on one lady, 
we had just been communicating only through Etsy and I did not have her phone number. She had ordered two armoires. She was building a house and ordered two armoires. And she ordered these in like, oh gosh, probably a few months ago. So regardless, I can't remember exactly when, but she had ordered them a few, just a few months prior, like, oh, probably like February, something like that. And so, but they were building a house. So they, and these were custom order armoires. She wanted them painted a very, very specific color, which I could not remember because it was all saved in my Etsy conversations. And I was going to reference it when it came time to paint the armoire. So the order was a $7,500 order. She paid 5,000 and was gonna pay it was a $7,000 order, something $7,000 order. She had paid 5,000 down via Etsy. And that's where her full name is, which I do remember her name, but she has one of those names that 4 million other people have the same name. Um, and so this is a really big pepper. I might be cutting it funny. I don't know. Um, I guess that wasn't too bad. So anyway, she, she paid 5,000 down and it was, owed like 2000 or 2500 <clears throat> and she was going to pay the balance before shipping so i was unable to get a hold of her i have her armoires i have her five thousand dollar down payment and no way to reach her all my other customers which i had more open orders which hadn't been shipped you know i had their phone numbers and so i had a way to contact them to say, because they had paid for their stuff and they still had their furniture, then they'd ship. So with everybody else, I was able to contact them and say, this is what happened to my Etsy shop. I just need your address so I can ship your furniture out at the due time. Because normally Etsy stores their addresses. And so that wasn't a big problem. But for my other customer, um, it was a huge problem. And so I wasn't able to get a hold of her. Well, I sent Etsy an email, and and then if you do research, and I am a research nut, it, like when your shop Etsy shop gets shut down, this has happened to lots of people. One uh, person wrote an article said about almost about every answer, so Etsy seller will get their shop shut down at one point or another. This was news to me, and I don't think that's necessarily true. I think that's an exaggeration, but that does go to say and how often it happens that people are saying that. And so, you know, you may have never heard of people getting their Etsy shop shut down. I really hadn't too much, but when it happened to me and I started doing research, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just super, super prevalent. And so... I emailed Etsy, and then in my research, I learned that once you email them, to wait, because it's not good if you keep emailing them, like wait two or three weeks for them to contact you. So I did, and it was really hard to wait, but I waited. I waited like through, oh, I don't know, three weeks, and then I contacted them, and weeks and weeks continued to go by and I've sent Etsy <clears throat> numerous emails and have never heard a thing and now it's been I want to say a little over three months since my Etsy shop Mountain Cove Market has never been shut has, has been shut down so one day and I was just beside myself because I mean that is eight to eleven thousand dollars a month of furniture that had been selling that was no longer selling i mean and but then i still had all of my same expenses and so we had done a good job <clears throat> of saving and having money set to the side and so i mean we definitely made it through but we definitely also really felt the pitch and um so all of that to say I believe what triggered my Etsy shop shutting down was me going in and changing all of those titles at one time. It looked like 
And that, that's just what I think. You know, somebody might take uh, contend with that point. That's the only thing that was done differently. The only thing. And so um, I think that their algorithm looked at that like, oh, there's a massive amount of change going on all of a sudden at once in the shop. It's been hacked and it shut it down. Here's uh, an example of how uh, the algorithm will catch things and just be the Etsy al algorithm and just be, excuse me, I'm gonna grab one of these guys, completely off about what is happening. So there is a lady in St. Louis and I will go buy some French chairs and stuff, dust from her. <clears throat> from time to time she's a an amazing upholsterer and I love Louie and I love going to visit her and so I went to visit her and her daughter who is her daughter's like in her 30s is so skilled <laughs> of a woodworker and furniture designer her daughter hand makes beds and tables and nightstands and stuff very farmhousey rustic ones from scratch using like reclaimed barn wood and she had an etsy shop that was just doing absolutely fabulous one of etsy's rules is like their restrictions is you cannot sell mattresses on etsy that's one of the prohibited things you cannot sell mattresses on etsy so her daughter's shop, it was like four or five years old. She was just killing it, doing an amazing job. And then in one of the, her listing descriptions, she was, it was like a king size bed. It was it, it was just a bed. There was nothing else. But she wrote, um, this bed fits a king size mattress. Oh my gosh. Because she, put mattress in the listing description, even though she was not selling a mattress, the Etsy algorithm caught that word and it just completely shut her shop down. She never heard, and like that's been like eight, 10 months or more. And she reached out to Etsy numerous times and never got a person her shop to this day, never opened back up. So shortly after that had happened to my shop, um, I heard that and it was, you know, it was kind of terrifying. Um, so I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And then one day um, I had read that and all my researching after this happened, um, that you cannot really made a big salad here, didn't I? That's okay. Now I'm going to put some beans on it. I had read one day that you cannot, um, oh, just start up a brand new shop. Um, and I, I don't, people had said it had some, has something to do with your IP address or whatever. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay. I don't know if that's true. But I was also really pained because I'm like, mostly pain. I mean, pain for missing the income, but also pained for um, sticky hands. Also pained that uh, this customer, you know, that I had her money and her armoire. And, you know, I didn't want to open up a new shop and have her one day see it and think, oh, she bailed on the other shop and then took my money and my furniture and now opened up a new one because that wasn't the situation. But I was talking to some counsel and they're like, open up and, you know, well, here's what happened. So people were telling me to, but I still wasn't sure. And then one day, so I, okay, this is a little bit of a backstory. So several months ago, probably like 10, 11 months ago, I had opened up um, a second Etsy shop called Casey Alvarez Art. And it was just for canvas art. Because in the past year, I had started painting like, well, about, yeah, in the past year, I started painting canvas art, like acrylics and oil paintings and 
making prints and things like that. And I thought at that time, I'm like, it might be best if I keep the canvas painting separate from the furniture. There's two very different things. And so after all this had happened and several weeks had gone by, like two months and there's no word from Etsy and um, we, we just needed to restart that income stream. I checked into an email that I almost never check. I have like three emails and I checked into an email that I almost never check. And I noticed that Etsy was billing me for listings from this canvas art shop. Well, I, I put a couple of listings <clears throat> on the shop, but I never did anything with it after that. Like, I wasn't building it up or anything. I just, um, I need a spoon because I have an avocado I need to cut um, multitasking. So, I hadn't put anything into the shop, any work or effort, and I'd forgotten all about the shop, completely forgotten about it even though it was an open live shop. Well, Etsy had been, um, the guy don't look too good, so I'm gonna wait and check him out later. So Etsy had been billing me for it, and I just then made the decision, this was about 30 days ago, I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna upload my furniture to here. I'm gonna move all my furniture to Etsy, and um, I'm gonna start setting up an e-commerce website. I did have a website, but it really, it wasn't like, like um, conducive to e-commerce where people could go on and just like check out an order. And so I moved all my furniture to my Canvas art shop and it's called Casey Alvarez Art. Oh, I think my shop was open about two and a half weeks. I got my first sale, which resulted in about a, it was about a $6,000 sale. It, well, yeah, pretty close to it. Um, it yeah, 5,500, something like that, between 5,500 and 6,000. And uh, it was a big old turquoise armor, a real fancy French one, and then a um, a beautiful French hutch. And so that was my first sale. About two weeks later, my second sale come in. So in the past 30 days on Etsy, I've done about $8,000 in revenue sales. So really quickly, that is just picking back up again. And in this time, I have still been putting out um, emails to Etsy saying, I have been trying to get a hold of you. I've explained to them this situation with my customer and said, I have people's furniture in their payments and I cannot send them to them. And it's crickets on Etsy's part, just absolute crickets. <sighs> so that is the update of what's going on with Etsy. And Here's what I want to say to you, because I have like felt such a huge responsibility and I don't take this as my fault at all because it's not, um, but I have sweat. Um, I have advocated so much for Etsy and it has been a good company for me up until this year and till this going on, but the very thought that people can go and um like people will begin to like see a bunch of sales and then they will invest in their business maybe open a, sh a brick and mortar maybe buy a bunch of inventory who knows hire somebody and if their shop gets shut down like etsy for no reason then etsy could be truly negatively impacting people's you know, livelihoods in just a horrible way. And so I want to just speak that out there as the truth. And right, I honestly, I kind of hate that I have to be a part of Etsy right now. I just need to, to build that income back up. Um, but I am working like a dog on my e-commerce website. And uh, you can have a peek at it. It's definitely still under construction. It's mountaincovemarket.net mountaincovemarket.net. And so, and, and it'll be under construction for a while because I'm doing it all myself and I'm doing it on Square Up, which is a huge learning curve from the other uh, hosting sites that I've built websites on. And I'm not, I'm just a self-taught person and not too technically 
scared and no i'm not looking for a web developer to come i just that's not in my budget right now but i cannot wait to get out under etsy's wing at this point because i just leaves a bad taste in my mouth to do business with a company that has such a um unethical way of like taking care of their customers of and that means people who buy on Etsy and people who sell we we will do like Louie and I will just go to great loss when we need to to take care of our customers and we expect that out of business people and companies we do business with and so to see to like work with a company that has zero customer service it just it does it leaves a bad taste in your mouth so i i want you to be aware of that you can make money on etsy i've definitely made good money on etsy um but for the long run i i don't like my experiences it's not stable at any day like you know it seems like it can be jerked out from underneath you and you can come crashing down all that to say, it still has taught me that there is a um, nationwide uh, market for my furniture. And if you've sold on Etsy and you've shipped furniture or woodworking or jewelry or whatever you may be making, it's taught you there's a demand nationwide for what you're doing. Like Etsy is not it. it is not the end all be all. There's so many other avenues and ways of um, having a nationwide platform. It's nice on Etsy that so many people go there to shop, but there's so many other ways. So that's what I'm working on right now. And then the months to come, I'm going to be talking a lot about that as well as furniture and, and other things. And so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you, share that update. I still need to go back. Um, look at that. I've got parsley. Usually, y'all, usually I have paint on me, but now I have parsley on me. Um, hope that doesn't gross anybody out. Here's my salad that I made. No, this is not all for me. I don't know. Can you see very well? So, that salad's lettuce, cucumbers and red bell peppers and parsley and um white beans so anyway i'm gonna cook that or you know cook a steak along with it for us tonight but anyway so there's if you're on etsy i encourage you if you don't already have i encourage you um not to quit or leave but to begin building your own e-commerce platform with your own website, whether you do that through Shopify or any other, I'm not using Shopify or any other platform. Um, I'm using Square Up. I don't love it. I've, I've already paid for a year and who, if I had known how difficult it was to use, I would definitely not do that again. So I can't say I recommend Square Up at this time. Um, once I maybe get the hang of it, I might go back and recommend it. But not now at this point. But again, that's not what I do. I'm not a web developer and I'm having to do this. That's part of being a small business owner. That's part of being an artist and a creative. Like we do everything ourselves. Like we're a one man band, you know, our first several years of getting started. That's just the way it is. And we can just embrace it and say, I'm not going to complain about it because good grief. What good would that do? <laughs> Nothing. So. That's my story. That's what happened. I am going to be around um, on Facebook, Paint with Casey. Same on Instagram. And my Etsy shop is Casey Alvarez Art. And um, I'm going to be going back through YouTube and changing all of my... Um, oh, I have to change like all my Etsy shop names on all my YouTube listing descriptions and all that. So anyway, um, I've just missed kind of being here on YouTube and talking to you guys and going to try to make time for it much more often, um, even weekly. And so I may have to chop a salad or 
pull weeds or fold clothes while I do it, but I don't mind. It's just real life. It's what it is. And um, so anyway, that's it. If you guys have questions, so please let me know because I, I would love for, you know, in a week or two, like the next video, one of the next or video after that, to be about answering some of your questions, whether it's about this, shipping, selling on Etsy, um, just let me know. I have some, there's been so many other more changes and I can't wait to share those with you guys. But this was the big one I wanted you to know. And uh, anyway, um, I guess I will say that one thing in my previous shop I've been so successful at, I had offered free shipping. So I thought on this one, I thought, you know, I'm going to try not free shipping and see what happens. And I did have three sales, but I also had, I just felt like the free, not offering free shipping was not working out for me very well. And so people will say, oh, I, I, when I offer free shipping, I build that shipping cost into the listing price. My average, you know, listing prices when I offer free shipping, my average pieces, I'm not talking about my huge fancy um, ornate French wedding armoires, those sell from usually around 4,000 to 5,500, 6,000, um, usually around 4,000, 4,500, something like that. But, you know, my other armoire is not quite that big and quite that fancy. The average sales probably around 25, 2,700 and about 700 of that is a shipping fee. And then I'll, you take that shipping fee away. So we're down to, um, oh, 20, let's say to 1700 after the shipping fee and Etsy's fees and take away $300 for the cost of the piece. So that's 1400 Let me get paid $1,400 for painting an armoire. Um, that might take me, oh, seven hours to do. That's not a bad deal. Maybe 10 hours, eight hours, if I really put a lot of detail in it, just because I've kind of developed a good system but that works. And that could even be with priming and everything else. So, and that's hand painting, not spraying. So, yes, people will pay those high prices when you have a nationwide audience. Yes, you can offer free shipping. Yes, you can build it into your, um, into your listing price and so on. And yes, it can still be profitable. So I just wanted to tell you that. But if you do have an Etsy shop, think now about beginning to build up your e-commerce ability, you know, where you can sell from your website and I would begin building up your Pinterest and your Instagram account. Um, if you're not already, I'm working on that. I'm not an expert in keeping up with social media, but that's where people will come across your things a lot. Um, a lot of people have found my stuff through Pinterest, I would say more than anywhere else. So that's what I'm doing is working on those things. I feel like a brand, an Etsy newbie all over again. Um, but it's come a little quicker for me this time because I know how to write the product descriptions and stuff. You can go to Casey Alvarez Art on Etsy and read product descriptions if you are one help on how to write them. Um, I think I've really kind of got that nailed down um, to where it works really well. And so if you need some tips or help on there, just go check mine out and pull from there whatever you would like to pull from there. So I love you guys. Please do let me know what you want to hear about, um, what you want to talk about, and I would just ask your questions, and I would love to answer them. And if you haven't yet, if you want to take this journey with me, if you want more information on flipping furniture, starting a small business, because we're going to cover all of that selling on Etsy, selling, creating your own platform, then just um, like and subscribe because, you know, it really helps me to keep going. That's why I do these videos.